Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the BaileyWiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. If you're a DM who likes to wow your players and you're using platforms like Dungeon Draft and Foundry Virtual Tabletop, then you're in the right place. Today, we're back to automating Foundry, this time with more of a general lesson about landings. You can think of landings as almost like stops along the bus route that is the actions of your monk's active tau trigger. You can use these to keep yourself organized and create some really powerful effects. So let's dive right in on landings. First, let's go over what a landing actually is. A landing action is down in the workflow section of the trigger actions on a monk's active tau. There, you simply put in a name, it could be anything descriptive, and then you decide whether to stop when reached in code. If a landing is specified as stop when reached in code, it just means if the action above it ends and you get to this landing, then we're going to stop everything below that landing. If you redirect to this landing, then it's not going to stop upon that redirection. It's just purely if you get to the landing through the natural flow of actions on the tile. So to set it up, you just add the landing action and specify a name, usually something descriptive, and then you select whether or not you want it to stop when reached in code. Now there's two main ways to use landings, and the first is going to be a redirection. So here I have a landing specified as no tokens. And then up here I'm using a filter, and the filter has if none go to, which is going to redirect to a landing. You can leave it blank to just stop the remaining actions in the tile, but if you want to continue or go to somewhere else, then you're gonna put in the name of the landing you want to go to. Again, in my case, it's no tokens, which I have set up to stop when reaching code because the actions within this landing, I don't want to happen every single time this tile is activated. And it's got a different notification than up here, which would be skipped over if there were no tokens. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in action. When I click on the tile, it says that there are no tokens within the tile. But then once I move my token actually onto the tile and click it, it's using that filter for checking what tokens are within the tile and saying that there is a token in the tile. This is obviously a very simple example and you can redirect in a lot of different ways, such as through dialogues and more. We'll look at that later. The next main use you'll have for landings is keeping yourself organized. I've got some walls and a light here and this tile simply toggles the light between on and off and the walls between doors and not doors. Really simple action, but we're going to demonstrate what using landings to keep yourself organized looks like. Here I've got landings for lights and for walls, just indicating what actions are going to be happening that are associated with each of those. Now both of these landings are set to just continue when they're reached, and it's mainly there for telling me what's going on. Obviously with this really simple tile it's not that difficult, but each of the landings are showing that, you know, my wall section is where I'm having all of my actions affecting my walls. So if I was affecting more than just this one set of walls, or is doing different operations on different parts, it'd be handy to have all these objects next to each other. Monk also added in a recent update this really handy color coding. See there's this green section under the lights landing, and then a purple section under the walls landing. Since neither of these have the stop when reached in code, they're going to actually sit side by side and there's a dashed line here where the walls landing begins. So it's really helpful for seeing visually what actions are associated with each landing. Really helpful for checking whether you have everything under the correct landing and also what it's associated with. So it's all within this larger heading here and that makes it really easy to keep organized, which is especially important when you get into more complicated actions or more involved tiles. It also offers a quick sanity check on whether or not you have a stop when reached in code on your particular landings. We're gonna return quickly to the redirect situation. We talked about being able to redirect things with filters or other actions that send something to a landing, but you'll notice that as I'm moving this token around, we're having a variety of different actions. It's giving us a different notification when we enter the tile, when we exit the tile, and when I'm clicking on the tile. And we're using landings in order to power that. Going to the setup side, you can see that on this when section of how the tile can actually be triggered, we've got three different methods, enter, exit, and click. 
Then under actions, we have landings associated with each of these trigger methodologies. And these are automatic landings or smart landings that you can use to automatically redirect the workflow of the tile based upon the triggering method. So I have all of these in here with stop when reached in code, so they're completely independent from each other. And once again, it's a landing action. And to use these, you just start with an underscore and you start typing in one of these methods and it's gonna offer autofill options to give you a smart landing. You can check the wiki for the full list of these and they're very powerful. Auto landings range from being able to redirect based on the trigger method like we have here to being able to filter for whether it's a player or a GM activating the tile or even the direction that a token is entering or exiting the tile from. So they're really potent and can give you really complicated and nice effects when using Monk's active tiles. And then again, we've got that great organization. So now let's take a look at some of this in action. This is the Magnificent Modular Mansion, which we recently remastered, and a lot of its capabilities are enabled through the use of landings and some clever ways we can use them. So to demonstrate, if we click on one of these rooms on the minimap, we have a dialog that I have set up to redirect to a different landing, and it's gonna change the version here, and we have an empty version of this kitchen. Then we can swap it to any other version that we see fit. And again, this is powered through a variety of different actions, and we're using landings to denote these different versions. So if we open up the tile and we go to the triggers, under actions, you can see we have three distinct landings, all separate out with that color coding and that hard line for being stop on entered. Then I have this dialogue option set up, and that contains some HTML in here in order to redirect the appropriate landings. We've covered dialogues and redirections in a previous Automating Foundry video, so you can check out more information on that in the video linked on screen right now. Returning to our main tile workflow here, you can see that these landings, in addition to being important for technical aspects for the different sections of furnished and empty and ruined here, they're also really helpful for organization. So I have all of these actions in the exact same order because for each of these landings, I'm affecting the same pieces, but in slightly different ways. For example, I may be activating or deactivating different things to make sure that these can switch between whichever state they were in previously. And I use these landings then to also be able to double check that I have all of the different pieces in place. So I go through and I make sure directly below my landing for each of these, it is the switch tile image. And then I'm activating and deactivating things in order. And I can easily cross reference to make sure that each of these landings has all of the information they need by quickly comparing with the color coding. This organizational ability is particularly helpful on more complicated versions like this one where I am also altering walls. So it's very invaluable here. The final piece of the puzzle for using landings on the mansion here, and you can see I've got some more set up here, is that I can also trigger tiles. And with triggering those tiles, you can also specify specific landings. So here I'm gonna use that dialogue where I have a redirect. You'll notice that I'm able to change the entire floor of this mansion here. And the reason I'm able to do that is again, that trigger tile action. So we're gonna bring our tile configuration back up. And if you take a look at the trigger tile action, we can specify the tile and we're using a tag here. You can use this with just the regular point and click or this tile, etc. but it's much more powerful if you have tagger to specify multiples. You can also choose the entities to pass the information along to the tile as if that entity triggered it, which is important for end mass traps or similar. And then finally, that is that landing field that we talked about. So because I have all of these tiles tagged with the same controls and they have the exact same landings, they're all named furnished, they all have the mansion one control, we're gonna trigger every single one of these tiles and they're all gonna to go to that furnished landing or that empty landing or that ruined landing, depending upon what I select with this master control token. So being able to trigger several tiles and all take them to the same landing is incredibly powerful and makes it really easy to create floor wide or mass reaching control pieces. There are additional components that you can use here as well such as being able to send the data or use returned data that is going to then cascade back into this tile. And you can also even trigger tiles when they're disabled using this methodology. 
So with the trigger tiles and using tags and landings, you can have really powerful effects. For example, we're able to make these floor-wide controls that swap out a whole floor quickly and easily, but you could also apply this to traps. Tag every trap you ever make with trap and give it a reset landing, and then in just a couple actions, you can create a tile that will reset all of the traps on the floor in an instant. Or we can change the entire mansion in one button press. And all of these are done with about seven actions total on the tile, and that's with some branching decisions here. So this is a really powerful workflow for you to use on all kinds of tiles. And that's going to conclude our discussion here on landings with Monk's Active Tile Triggers. I hope that this more concept and tech demonstration video has helped show you the power of landings and given you a little bit more of an understanding of not only how we use landings, but why we use them, and giving you some ideas of how you can leverage them more effectively when creating your scenes. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content, and consider becoming a patron. Not only do you support the channel, but you also gain access to all of the modular systems and scenes that we've ever made, including this updated Magnificent Mansion in the Bailiwiki Maps Premium Module. Once again, this has been Zephyr with the Bailiwiki channel. Thank you so much for watching, happy gaming, and have a good one.